Hello everyone, welcome to part 9 of the build series of the SC10 short course truck. Uh, in this part we'll be continuing on with the transmission assembly and just it's mainly just the final assembly of it. Uh, and that what that'll entail is the bumper arms, uh, other parts of the uh, bumper slipper clutch assembly and so on so let's get on with this first of all I would like to point out that in this part we'll be putting the spur gear on and as you can see here what I have here is a J concept silent spur gear now spur gears that come with it it comes with actually comes with two spur gears um, comes with an 84 tooth and a what's the number 75 tooth spur gear now not that there's anything wrong with these i just want to with the motor and speed control i'll be using i just want to kind of have it geared so it's fairly even with uh the other guys at the club where i race so um, i've also got another j concepts spur gear it's also it's it's same kind of one it's a but it's a 78 tooth but I will not be using that and I will not be using uh, the included spur gears but for if you're not if you don't have any of these just use the whatever ones that you'll be using just rem bear in mind that the motor that you use determines what spur gear you will use as well as the pinion gear so I'll be using this J Concepts uh, spur gear. I like how it's a resealable bag. Not that there's anything that, that you would use to put in here. Although, I suppose some extra spare screws. What have we got here? Ooh. J Concepts sticker. Don't need that. Don't need that. Alrighty, so. We don't need the actual spare gear at this point, so we'll put that over here with the slip clutch assembly. Uh, okay, so what we're doing now is we'll be putting the bumper section on. Okay, now, see, from all intents and purposes, they're, they're the exact same. So I'm guessing it doesn't really matter where you put it. So, we'll put the, we'll start putting this on so according to the manual I've actually gone ahead of myself and put the I've done an erp derp move once again so we have to take the motor plate off so this is what happens when you get ahead of yourself But it was good just to test fit it anyway. So we know that it goes on. <laughs> Alrighty, so by the looks of things, it says to get the screw, put it through, put it through this top one here, and put this one through as well. like so and then also see where so where has it okay so we're not we're not gonna bolt that together yet so now now we can actually put on the uh, put on the What's Macaulay? So I think, hang on a sec. So, okay, so that doesn't make sense. How's that supposed to go? How's that supposed to thread through? There's nothing to actually thread it on with. Interesting. That makes 
makes better sense. Oh, look at that. That's better. There's just a slight difference in them. Remember, even though this is metal on metal, still don't over tighten them because you can strip the thread on the aluminium or aluminium if you're American uh, motor plate because they are a lot weaker. Alright, so that's in. Now for the next part. We need the rear part of the bumper. So that goes, let's see, which way does it say to have it facing? So it has to face down an aluminium or aluminum lock nut. That goes in there, like, oop, and falls out, goes in. So we'll just pop that through there. Sometimes an electric driver will come in handy. I think I've got one around here somewhere but I don't know. And I have a text message. And as I predicted, the lock nut is spinning on but that'll do for the time being, we can work with that later. So that is the rear end of the uh, bumper area. So stay tuned for part 9.2 so now what we'll be doing is we'll be putting on the slipper clutch assembly <coughs> pardon me so what we need are the necessary parts the pardon me the slipper hubs the clutch slipper clutch pads spur gear the slipper clutch spring slipper clutch spring washer and a small nylock nut okay so as I mentioned I'm not I'm not using the uh, included spur gears in the kit I'm using a J concepts uh, silent spur gear 81 tooth so like I said before, you don't have to go out and use the exact same. You don't have to use the exact same one that I'm using. Just use the one that's with the kit. I'm just, I just want to use this one. So let's go on. So first of all, by the looks of things, the plate, the slipper hubs look identical to each other. So I'm guessing it doesn't matter which one goes on first. Is there a difference in height? No, there's not. Okay, so uh, I'll stick that on. I have to hold the diff out drive so it goes on easy. Nice. Okay, now what I like to do is you'll notice that the, the clutch pads are kind of coned in a little bit. 
I like to put it so that it's kind of raised up a little bit. That way it'll make it a little, little bit easier. This probably like a little tuning tip. So it adds a little bit of pressure on the spur gear. Put the next pad on. So you can see it's got a bit of a spring to it as I push down. So next hub. There we go. Look at that. Nice. Now, slip a clutch spring. Now for the washer. Now note, take note with the washer that it's got like a little lip. That little lip goes down onto the spring like so. Now we just need to put the nylock nut on. Okay, now in the manual it says that the the thread of the top shaft here that the clutch assembly goes on should poke out at roughly 0.5 millimeters. Now, my despite my digital calipers, I'm not going to get that distance. It's going to be too awkward to get it. So, in a way, we're just going to have to eyeball it. So make sure so you use the tools necessary. Tighten it. It's a little bit hard to tell. Just a little bit more. Okay, you can't see it on the camera, but that is about half a millimeter. So there we go, folks. There is the slipper clutch assembly. Pretty, pretty straightforward. So stay tuned for part 10.